Hi, Rich Pickett. Just completed my first day of training for the Vision Jet here in Knoxville. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm in their fixed sim, gorgeous graphics, full cockpit, just doesn't move. Trying to help facilitate uh, my memory of all the required memory items for the aircraft. So it helps me to be able to sit in the plane and do it. So I'm gonna run through some of these. You'll see how it works. So what you've got for your check ride and for the tests in between, right? You've got to do these memory items. And I have a couple pages of them. They're not bad once you get used to them, but initially go, oh my God, there's a lot of memory items in here, geez. So, and they're both items such as limitations like weights, etc., And then uh, in temperatures and icing and flying. And then there's also procedures in the cockpit for you to go through that are emergencies. And so in particular, I'm just gonna go through the whole list. Like the first one is automatic flight control man malfunction, right? So that's the autopilot system. And it includes a stick pusher, the ESP, um, and which is their stabilization program from Garmin, and, uh, and the USP and the autopilot. So for virtually all those, if you have any, air, any problems with the, uh, the autopilot system, which includes all those components, what you wanna do is you wanna take control of the aircraft. So what you do is you grip the side stick firmly. Da -da, I see the side stick here. And then uh, we press and we control that and we press the disconnect button, this big red button. Once we do that, then we maintain control and we're pressing and holding that button because if I let go of that button, whatever the problem is, it might come back. So I press and hold autopilot disconnect button, hold the airplane and then come on, reach over here and pull circuit breaker E3, which is autopilot servos and just pull that out. Once that's pulled out, I can let go of the autopilot disconnect. Not the stick, <laughs> but the autopilot disconnect. So we have engine emergency on takeoff, speed below VR. Any emergency, we just abort. All right. So that means max braking, thrust lever to idle. We get rid of that. Engine fire on takeoff, low altitude. Well, then you're going to go ahead and land as soon as possible. So it depends how low it may just how bad the fire is you may just be going straight ahead or plus or minus a few degrees so considered low altitude we don't specify exactly how low that is but typically if we're a you know above 600 feet good chance you're going to pull the caps feet 600 agl and, and try that um, above 2000 you'll evaluate what you need to do but below 600 you're pretty much going to land straight ahead 600 to 2000 pull a chute right away. Above 2000, you can evaluate and determine your best course of action. Engine failure on takeoff, low altitude, right? So on this one, we best glide, which is 120 knots, and then landing gear as, as required. So it depends upon what altitude you are. It may still be actually, still have the landing gear down flaps and not enough time to bring them up. But if you want to reduce that drag, then you want to try to see if you can get it up. At least that's my opinion. But these things are just quick items, right? You really don't want to do too much. You want to take care of these things quickly and then do the checklist. That's really, really important on any emergency. Don't try to overthink it. Just do the steps that they have in memory items and don't go beyond that until you get your checklist. Rejected takeoff breaks maximum pilot effort without uh, skidding and thrust to idle. Uh, it's, that's if you're up off the ground, right? And you can get back on the runway. You stay there and do that engine failure in flight well airspeed uh if we're at altitude airspeed 120 200 for doing the air starts and then uh, we find a landing area and put the mask on oxygen mask really conveniently located up here just perfect i'll show you right here in that nice location perfect ergonomic location for masks so easy than trying to grab them from behind you that you have in some other jets so you put them on, and uh, then that's into that memory item. And oh, the other one in there, uncontained engine failure. In other words, if the rotor burst in flight, which is incredibly rare, but then it's similar to engine failure in, in flight, except you're not going to have to worry about restarting it, right? So think about what's important is that means glide, and that's 120 knots, and then uh, turn toward a landing area and put on your mask, don it 100%. Abnormal engine start, you just got to stop the engine. So you turn the knob to off, show you where the knob is. 
right here. Engine knobs off. Then you press and hold it for 30 seconds, right? Because you're trying to dry motor, and if there's a problem, then it, it gets all the excess fuel out of the um, engine. And then, of course, you before a start, you want to go back and look and make sure there's no pooled fuel in the in the nacelles. Smoke removal and cabin fire, um, they're identical. So what you want to do again, mask on, smoke goggles on, and then what we do is the same up here with oxygen mask switches. Uh, I mean, oxygen mask is a switch to deploy the uh, mask for the passengers. Emergency descent. Well, we want to get down quickly, right? So autopilot, disconnect, that big red button again. Power lever to idle. And then we pitch down um, 20 degrees initially, and we go up to VMO or MMO. Caps activation. We reach up here, pull the caps, both hands. I can pull up 45 pounds. If we have a problem on the ground, then we have emergency ground egress. So before you get out, you want to make sure the engine shut down. That makes sense, right? So you turn the knob to off, press momentarily, bat one and bat two off, put the parking brake, and then get out of Dodge or get out of your vision jet. Cab now to do high warning. That means, hey, what happened? What's going on? While you're figuring this out, the most important thing is get that memory item, which is make sure that the pilot is not incapacitated, so immediately put on the mask. So the memory, high altitude, mask on, 100%. If you see a cabin differential pressure high warning, so the maximum cabin pressure differential on the G2 vision jet is 7.4. That's structural. What it normally is is around 7.1. So what you want to do is, well, that means you've got a problem, right? So before you do anything with pressurization, just like before, mask on and you turn the bleed bleed air to fresh air in other words it's it stops the bleeder coming in which is of course pressurizing the cabin caps activated warning hey if you activate it and you know about it then you've made that decision if hey i got a caps warning what happened activation but i didn't pull it and the handle is still stowed then you press the autopilot button for one second and then that will cancel that warning engine fire warning and flight so engine fire right it's a temperature so issue it's 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 exceeded the limits so what you do is you bring the thrust lever to idle 15 seconds if you still have that warning then it's probably <clears throat> a good chance you've got a real fire so then you reach up and we we lift the cover for the engine fire acknowledge See that switch up there, I've lifted it. And then you toggle that button. And then you'll press one of the discharge. Fire extinguishers discharge. It's really cool. Cirrus has two fire extinguishers. Some of the newer jets just have one for two engines. They have two for one. So then you can uh, left or right or push. If you feel you still have a, then you go to an oxygen mask on, right? So what you've done, you just shut down your engines. When I do the engine fire acknowledge that shuts down the engine right away discharge the fire so now i don't have any bleed air coming in mask on right 100 percent. then you go to the checklist engine fire warning on the ground okay if we had it on the ground we haven't gone anywhere very similar engine fire acknowledge cover lift toggle it hit one of the switches right and evacuate the airplane if we start and we have an in one warning it says Engine start, N1, right? Bing, ding, 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 ding. And we come over here, turn the switch off and hold the engine uh, switch off and hold for one second, it's momentary to complete the shutdown. Then we come here and then install warning, warning, right? Install warning system, warning message, right? So basically we got stall warning. So push the nose down, right? You want to reduce that angle of attack and Put your thrust lever up to 100% takeoff power just so that you can recover from that, right? So you've got that. It's not really 100% power because that's dependent upon altitude, but it will be that takeoff thrust setting for that particular altitude or wherever you're at or elevation. So stick pusher warning. That means, hey, you got a warning. What's going on? It means, hey, if you've gotten that far past the stall warning, you're in stick pusher. Hey, you better put your nose down quick. So pitch, power to take off, all right? 
if you find that it's a malfunction that, hey, your crew is long, you're at a high speed and you're getting the stick push or something's wrong, then what's really important is to make sure that you grab firmly the control stick, push that autopilot disconnect like we talked about before with autopilot issues, right? Maintain control of the aircraft, reach over with your other hand and pull, which would be your right hand, pull A3 circuit breaker, which is autopilot servos. Once you pull that, you can release that autopilot button here. Keep holding on to the stick, though. I was just showing you how to, that you're releasing it. Keep holding. Just lift that thumb off and release off that knob or that button. Autopilot pitch trim warning on the ground. Just abort. Gosh, you're still on the ground. Abort. Emergency Autoland activating warning. Hey, what the heck? How did Autoland get activated? I don't know, but I didn't activate it, and I'm still awake, cognizant, hopefully. So what you do is you press and hold that autopilot disconnect for one second, and then that will disable it. Then for the IPS, the ice protection system, if you ever get an IPS engine inlet under pressure caution, so the inlet is taking bleed air from the engine to keep it anti-ice. If you get an under pressure warning, you wonder, that's what's got a pressure sensor there. What you do is you come up and you recycle the switch all within one second. So you do the engine IPS switch cycle off and then on within a second. Now the next three use the same process. The next three are miscompares. So for this, uh, the SFD out miscompare, the SFD I indicated airspeed miscompare, the uh, SFD, it's hard to read these letters here, SFD uh, pitch miscompare and the SFD roll miscompare, what you do is you press the display backup button in through here. Bingo. We're going to do that now. All right? And that gets it set for me. So now it, it sets up. So now I'm using the alternate sensors in through there. So go, wait a minute, what's going on? Beautiful display, isn't that? It's really cool. So that's kind of the end of my first day of training. Pretty cool. Lots of fun. Um, and uh, what we'll do is uh, see what happens tomorrow. Thanks for watching.